Hey guys, what's happening? Stephen Howe here, and let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a bad haircut? Well, isn't that one of the most frustrating things if you have had a bad haircut? Uh, when you have your, these high expectations and you're, you're going to the barber or the beauty salon or wherever you're going and you come back and it's, it's not quite what you envisioned, well, that experience happened to me today and uh, I want to tell you a little story about that. But uh, if you've come to this video because you're like, I want to learn about real estate uh, wholesaling, specifically virtual wholesaling, versus doing it in my own backyard, don't worry, you've come to the right place. Uh, so if you'd rather skip my little story about my bad haircut experience that you're staring at, I have kind of a big forehead and uh, you know not too happy with the haircut that I got. I was tempted to wear a hat in this video. Just skip forward about 30 or 45 seconds. But um, anyways, we're, we're going to dive into the virtual wholesaling topic versus local because this is a question that I get from students, subscribers, and I want to give you guys some, some pros and some cons. Maybe you're getting into real estate wholesaling, real estate investing, and you're wondering if, if you should do it in your own backyard or if you should do it in a virtual market. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second, but back to the bad haircut story. So the barber that I typically go to, they're one of those straight razor barbers, um, awesome. They, they, they do it up really nice at the end, they put a hot towel on the neck, they have the straight razor, you know, shave you really well, and it's about 30 minutes away from me. So what happened is the barber shop that I typically go to, there was a fire in the front of it. It's in a historical district of the city that I live in, about 30 minutes away from here. And uh, there, there's some fancy restaurants on that street, uh, trendy restaurants, I should say. And there was a kitchen fire in the middle of the night and the businesses behind it got a little blowback from the smoke. So thankfully the barbershop that I go to, I know the owner, it's, it's a, kind of a mom and pop business. He's always slam packed. And just another little side note, um, I love like talking with business owners and small business owners and entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur minded people. And this guy, the way that he runs his barbershop, it's so awesome. Like he's literally booked out every 15 minutes. And if you're late, sorry, like you've missed your appointment. And he's booked from like seven, eight in the morning till five or six at night. Um, just, just an awesome dude. So I'm always picking up little tips and the efficiencies of how people run their business and I find that stuff fascinating. So anyways, thankfully his business wasn't uh, damaged too, too much and he had insurance and all that type of stuff and in his, his particular building, he had just painted it. He's had, he, he also, um, like myself, he just had a baby, or he's in the process of having a baby. His, uh, his wife is pregnant right now and, and, uh, and so they just renovated the barbershop all new paint and then this fire happens. So anyways, he recommended that I go to another barber which you know was actually about two or three minutes from my house. Uh, they are also a straight razor barber, um, really great reviews. And, um, and I actually went there about two weeks ago and my hair grows really, really fast. So I try to get a haircut every two or three weeks somewhere in that you know range. And the first time I went there, it was one of the best haircuts I've ever got. I'm like, this is awesome, man. Maybe, hey, they're, you know, it's a lot closer to my house, two, three minutes versus 30 minutes. And so, and his business isn't quite uh, up and running yet. So I was gonna give this barbershop another shot. Went there today and uh, and got it cut a little too short. So a little uh, self-conscious about that. I was thinking about wearing a hat but uh, just figured I'd kind of tell you that story there because, um, man, I, and my wife makes fun of me all the time. I'm like so picky about my haircuts. And uh, if they go up a little too high on the sides, it, when you have a big head like I do, when you have a, a five head instead of a four head, um, you know, it just looks a little silly when it gets cut too short. So uh, I was thinking about wearing a hat, but I figured I'd just jump on camera here. Uh, but I don't want to distract you. So I, I needed to tell you that story because um, when you're uh, looking at the whiteboard here about virtual wholesaling, I need you to be focused on what I'm saying and not looking at my head. So I'm glad we got that squared away. This was my attempt to be funny. I'm working on my dad jokes. I'm working on my humor. So just bear with me here. Um, so let's dive in without, I said 30 seconds or a minute and that was like, what, five minutes? So goodness gracious, we gotta get going here. 
So virtual wholesaling versus local wholesaling. Um, let's talk about some of the pros and cons if you're wondering, should you do this in your own backyard or should you do this virtually? It's a very sexy topic and I know the people who are watching my videos, if you've come across my videos, first off, let me say this, if you've come across this channel for the first time, uh, I typically don't go on personal rants like that. Uh, but you've come to the right place to learn about real estate investing, mindset, entrepreneurship, business building, and to develop real skill sets in your life and business. And I'm so glad to have you here. Definitely get, uh, you know, make yourself at home, check out the videos, subscribe to my channel if you're liking the style, if you're liking the content, and uh, make sure you hit that beautiful little notification bell so that way you can get notified when new videos drop. And, um, so anyways, uh, virtual wholesaling versus local wholesaling, what happens is, you know, when people are just getting going, they're wondering, like, what, you know, what should I do? And I talk to a lot of people. I offer actually a one-on-one -on -one free complimentary consultation. Um, you can get more details on that. This video is not about that. I'm over on my blog at Productive Wisdom. But uh, over the last few years of working with people one-on-one, -on -one, of talking with, a, you know, hundreds and thousands of people, um, in these one-on-one -on -one strategy calls and just in the comments and um, emails that I get all the time, one of the biggest questions is deciding on where you want to set up shop, where you want to, to promote your business, where you want to set up your real estate investing and wholesaling business. So doing it virtually, let's talk about some of the pros for doing it virtually versus you know uh, doing it local. So if you're doing it virtually, um, one of the biggest pros is time efficiency, right? You're not personally driving out to meet with motivated sellers or um, you know, pick up a key or a lockbox or you know, uh, put out advertising locally and, and meeting people in person and all the drive time. So uh, you're, the leveraging of your time, which is one of your most valuable assets, is a huge benefit. Um, number two, if you're in like a smaller rural market, um, you know that it can be tough for wholesaling, right? You want to be in a bigger, booming market. Um, it doesn't mean that the market has, I shouldn't say booming, but you want to be where there's lots of houses, lots of sales, lots of things happening. You don't want to be out in the middle of uh, the country or something like that. It's going to be very, very difficult to get your business up and rolling there. So maybe you live in a smaller city and there's a bigger market within an hour or two of you. And I know this was the case for me when I first started. Um, so there's that aspect of it. And then just the sheer sexiness of it, virtual wholesaling. Hey, I can run my business from a coffee shop. I can run it from around the world if I'm on vacation, on my laptop from the beach. You know, you see, um, you know, that whole trend. And for the people who are watching my videos, I, and this is what I was going to say earlier, so sometimes my, my thoughts will go like that, uh, so thanks for bearing with me. But um, a big demographic of my audience that I did not know until recently is millennials. Now, I work with a lot of people from just out of high school, just in college, just out of college, and there are people who follow me, believe it or not. I just got an email the other day from two twins from Texas who are 75 years old and who have been wholesaling for six years. And they stumbled across my YouTube videos, they've latched on to some of the training that I do and they're out there taking action and making things happen and they're 75 years old. So I work with people all across the spectrum but a big percentage is millennials, right? And then there's all sorts of other percentages too, mid 30s, 40s, 50s, but um, millennials have it like there's, there's stats and stuff that have been done that they're very, very interested in wholesaling virtually. So if you're a millennial, you're watching this video, you know, this is right on the money for you. So virtual wholesaling, there's just this, the sexiness of it, right? You can do it from anywhere. You can pick and choose your markets. You, if your market kind of sucks, you can go into a better market. If your market's small, you can go into a bigger market. Um, so those are some of the benefits, right, of virtual wholesaling. Very appealing, right? So let's talk about some of the negative sides to virtual wholesaling. So if you were virtual wholesaling, um, the, one of the biggest negatives is that eventually you're going to get to the point when you're wholesaling houses that you need to get pictures of the inside of a property or go meet a seller and build rapport or you know put a lockbox on the property or pick up a contract or maybe meet 
you know, a contractor or a buyer or, you know, an end investor who's going to buy the deal, meet them in person to build rapport or meet them to pick up a, an assignment contract or, you know, something of that nature. Eventually, you're going to need someone on the ground in person. Now, thankfully, that's not all that difficult, but when you're just getting rolling, that can be a little bit of a roadblock for some people, right? Okay, so there's the extra step of hiring someone. Now, it's not as hard or as complicated as you may think. However, it is that extra little hurdle to get through when you're getting your business off the ground. However, it can lead to some great benefits as we've already talked about. Um, so, basically, what does that entail? It entails you writing a Craigslist ad, a compelling ad, explaining and being very detailed. So that a lot of times when we're staring at a blank page where we have to do some type of creative work, where we have to do that critical thinking of like, okay, what is the headline of my ad going to be? What are the specific things that I need to say that very specifically and very detailed explains exactly the type of person I'm looking for and the exact duties that I want them to do? And when I say duties, I think of the show Friends with uh, Chandler Bing. But anyway, side note. Um... So, yeah, so there's that critical thinking aspect there of like, okay, I really need to think this out. And then you need to talk with a couple people, right? So then there's that effort that you have to put into, you know, and maybe there's a little bit of nerves there in, in talking with someone about, um, you know, being that man on the ground or woman on the ground for your business, kind of your boots on the ground type person. And then once you have your heart set on somebody and you have somebody that, you know, you trust, that you feel good about, um, you know, there's that person of like, well, what if after a couple of weeks of doing this for you or a month or two, they, you know, go on to something else and then you have to advertise all over again. So there's the turnover and the attrition rate and all that type of stuff to think about, right? So just if you're considering virtual wholesaling, um, and I can do another video on this, I don't want to make this, um, you know, too all over the place here, but um, just a golden tip is what you want to do is you wanna become more efficient at making verbal offers and then you only send someone uh, to go on your really, really hot appoint, uh, your hot appointments to kind of be that face in person of your company, to really meet with a motivated seller if it's absolutely necessary or to put out signs for you if you're selling a deal on the back end, uh, to meet a buyer, to get a lockbox, to get a key. And what you can do is you can simply PayPal them, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, depending on their time spent. And if you do it right, a lot of times in the beginning, you know, you're only sending, you know, maybe one or two payments a week. So that I guess would be, you know, especially if money is tight, that's gonna be another negative. Um, is there's going to be a little bit of a cost to it, you know, maybe 30 bucks a week, 60 bucks a week, that type of thing, um, as you get going and you get that first deal done. Once you get your first 10 or $15,000 deal, you don't mind spending a few hundred dollars a month to have this vital piece, you know, this vital person in your business. Another golden tip and golden nugget, and if you're liking these tips, this is another beautiful chance for you to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment below and share this video because I want to get the word out. Um, a lot of people are making this more complicated than it is and there's some confusion about this. But um, who are you looking for if you're um, you know, wanting to wholesale virtually and you want like kind of boots on the ground? What I found and what I used, because I did this for the first couple of years in business, I was wholesaling in a city that was about an hour and a half away from me, and I never stepped foot in this city, not once. I never went to one closing. I did it all 100% virtually, so I want you to know that it's possible. I found someone who um, basically ran kind of like a renovations company, they, or I shouldn't say renovations. They, they did renovations, but they were more of like a maintenance man. And this guy, his name was Brett, and he was just a good, down-to-earth guy. He was a great people person. We developed a really good working relationship, and he would just go out, you know, pick up contracts, meet with sellers, um, you know, tell them a little bit about my business. And all the time, when I would talk to a seller after Brett went out and picked up a contract or picked up the key, they would be like, I just love Brett. You know, Stephen, he was awesome. You know, thanks for sending him out. And I just say, yeah, you know, um, Mrs. Jones, I'm, you know, uh, I definitely want to come see the property. I'd be around 200,000 for the property. 
Um, you know, I'd love to see it on the inside. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it myself, but my partner Brett can come out there tomorrow at five o'clock. How does that work for you? So that's kind of how I would set that up and structure that. Um, so finding a good, um, and I just put you know, an advertisement in Craigslist. Now you can advertise in various sites, um, but Craigslist is a really good one and finding someone in the general labor section and finding like a good all around like people person, maintenance man, that type of thing, um, or any other connections. Maybe you have family, friends, relatives, uh, acquaintances in the city that you're trying to virtual wholesale. So those are some of the pros and cons about virtual wholesaling. Now, what is the other option? The other option is getting your real estate business, your, your investing business, uh, your wholesaling business set up in your own backyard. And there's a lot of different schools of thought on this and obviously listed a lot of benefits for virtual wholesaling. But if you had to ask me like, Stephen, if you had to say what was more beneficial or what should I do, you know, should I do this locally? Should I do it virtually? Um, you certainly want to consider like where do you live? Do you live in a small market or a bigger market? You know, in each state in the United States, there's a couple of bigger cities and wholesaling is going to work best in, in some of the bigger cities. Like for example, I live in Ohio, there's Cincinnati, there's Columbus, there's Cleveland. Uh, I live a little outside of Dayton, Ohio, which is a little bit smaller of a market. Um, you know, Tennessee, you have Memphis, North Carolina, you have Charlotte, and there's other cities as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be like one of the biggest cities in all of the nation. I'm not saying that. It just needs to be a pretty good market size, right? So you want to look for, if you just go to like Google, uh, Google Maps and you type in the city and state, it's going to a lot of times give you a population. And you want that population to be over a quarter of a million, um, just as a general kind of wide ranging rule of thumb. But um, I would say to, to answer that question, it's always a little bit easier. It's also it's always a little bit better, I think, to get started in your own backyard. Why? Because typically a benefit to doing that is you're going to know the area a little bit better. And that's actually something we could list in the in the negative column of virtual wholesaling. You're not there virtually. So or um, you're not there physically. So, um, you know, you might not know the area as well. You, it might be a little harder for you, although you can overcome this. I certainly did overcome this. You know, when you're talking with sellers and they're talking about, oh, yeah, over on Jefferson Street and you're kind of just going along with it. But you don't know Jefferson Street from from whatever, like you, you, you're just kind of rolling with it. Right. So there's that little little bit of like vulnerability that you have to push through a little bit. Um, so when you're doing it locally, you're, chances are you're going to know the area a little bit better. Chances are you're going to build a little bit better local connections with end buyers, with sellers. You're going to learn the neighborhoods and the zip codes faster and better and become a more of a master of your market. And then if something goes wrong or whatever the case is and you need to run out to a property and pick something up or, you know, save a deal and, and really talk with the seller or meet a buyer or put out any fires that could naturally creep up in your business, you can just do that in person right in your own backyard. So that's a big benefit as well, right? Another benefit is that it's less steps to get up and running. So again, you're not having to, to post an advertisement and interview and explain and go through attrition and turnover, um, trying to hire somebody to go out on your appointments to you know, to do these different activities that require somebody in person, you're able to just go do them yourself. So it's going to save you money from paying them and it's going to save you those extra steps. And sometimes those little extra steps when your confidence is still growing and when your belief system is still growing, that can really put a hindrance on, on your progress, right? So it's, there's something to be said about that. And another benefit that we kind of already touched on a little bit is that you're going to be more relatable. If somebody's talking about something that's happening in your town, your city, you're going to more likely know what's going on, know what they're talking about, and be a little bit you know more relatable from that aspect. Um, so that's kind of some of the differences in what you want to think about. So if at all possible, if you live in a big enough market, you strong, or with, if you live within 30 or 45 minutes of a big enough market, I would say to focus on, on that local market. And regardless of whether you want to wholesale virtually or wholesale locally, um, here is another 
word of wisdom, golden nugget that you want to write down and make sure you remember. One of the things that when I'm talking with a lot of people that, you know, they'll often say is, yes, you know, Stephen, I want to get this up and running here in this market. And then I want to go to this market over here. And then I want to go over here. Or I'm thinking about doing it in both of these markets and see what works better. Um, that a lot of times is a recipe for failure, and I want to advise against that for you. Um, I want to recommend that you decide to put your stake in the ground, that you decide to put your stamp in one market, and you become known as the person to go to in Charlotte, North Carolina, the person to go to in Memphis, the person to go to in whatever market that you're choosing to dominate. You want to be known. You want to get the message out there that Joe or Johnny or Becky or whoever's watching this video, that you and your partners buy houses, that you treat people right, that you make fair offers, that you always lead with your best foot forward, and you know that you have a solution for them. And if they need to sell quickly, you are the person to come to. It won't always be a perfect situation and maybe the best thing for them to do is to list it with a real estate agent or a realtor. You know, maybe, you know, it's not the best fit and that's okay to tell people too, but they need to know that you are the person to come to and it's so much easier to get that message out if you are focused on one central task and, you know, you want to be the master of one market and not, you know, all over the place. So, so often I'll talk with people and it's just simply because they're trying to do the right thing and they're not sure if if XYZ market is better or or market over here and you know if we're honest we hear all sorts of things on these YouTube videos and podcasts and courses and seminars so we have all this influx of information coming in and we're just trying to do the right thing right so I totally get it uh, but having been in this game for a long time, I want you to understand that you need to stop doing so much. Less is more. Less is absolutely more. And the more you get focused and the more that you clear the clutter and take away and, and you just focus on a few things, the faster it's going to be for you to succeed. And I just want you to write that down. I want you to understand that. So guys, that's what I have to say in this video. We're talking about virtual wholesaling versus local wholesaling. Um, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're a, a wholesaler, rehabber, landlord, these principles, these concepts can still apply to you and hopefully you got some wisdom uh, in this video. Um, so guys, I'm so grateful for you. Thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like this video, definitely let me know it. Um, also, feel free to comment below. Let me know what type of videos you want me to make in the future. What market you're in. Let me know in the comments what market you're in, if you're committing to doing this in a virtual market or a local market, and maybe why. And I just love to kind of see the, you know, where, where you guys are investing, what market you're in. And who knows, maybe you guys can make some connections in the comments. Um, as I do more and more of these daily videos, I want this, this, this YouTube channel to be a fun place to come for you to get some education, a little bit of entertainment for my goofy self. Um, and, and really to have a community here of, of like-minded people, entrepreneurs, real estate investors, business building, um, who are going somewhere, who are making an impact and helping other people. So if you want to be a part of that community, stick around, watch these videos, go check out my other videos. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. I have some really cool topics planned, but I always want to hear back from you what you want to learn because I want these to be valuable. And um, that's all I have. I'm going to stop talking. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.